In this video, I'm going to talk about drop head syndrome in Parkinson's and similar movement disorders. This is not a common symptom in these disorders, but when it happens, it can be very unsettling. The primary cause of drop head syndrome is weakness in the deep muscles in the back of your neck. Some individuals also have dystonia in the front of their neck, which then also pulls them down. These are common complaints I hear from individuals who come to see me for the first time. So they talk about progressive increased difficulty with holding their head up, and now they can only hold their head up for only brief periods. As the day progresses, it gets harder for them to hold their head up, and I think that's partly due because those weak muscles are getting progressively more fatigued as the day goes on. Then they have more neck pain in the back of their neck, which becomes worse with sitting or standing for long periods. And we'll talk about why people experience that later on. And then they can reduce their pain when they lie down. So when you're sitting or standing or basically in a vertical position, your head is gonna drop down because gravity is working on it and the neck muscles in the back of your head are just not strong enough to keep your head vertical. But when you lay down, your head posture is fine as you can see in that picture. In order to compensate for not lifting their head, these individuals have to continuously look up in order to see straight ahead. This is an individual of somebody talking. As you can see, she's looking up the entire time so she can look straight ahead because she's compensating for not being able to lift her head enough. You can see when you're walking with a drop head posture how it becomes more difficult at intersections to look at the street sign or the traffic or when you're grocery shopping in stores to look for signs that are typically closer to the ceiling to see what's in each aisle. There are many sources to neck pain, but I want to talk about neck pain as it relates to the drop head syndrome. In order to do that, first we need to take a look at a healthy neck. Normally, in a healthy neck, you have a cervical lordosis. That's the curve in the neck over here. What holds this position of the cervical lordosis are the deep muscles in your neck and the base of your head. So they keep your head upright and they keep the curve in your neck. Then there's other structures in your neck and they're called ligaments and they hold bone to bone. They protect your joints from extreme positions. You can see here in this picture the ligaments that are attached to the bones here in the base of the skull. And in this picture, you can see how these ligaments in between the bones there are being overly stretched. Think of this rubber band as your ligament and the fingers are the bones they're attached to. When your head is dropped down, you're stretching these ligaments out and it's the continuous stretch on these ligaments that cause that deep achiness in the back of your neck. And then when you go to lay down, they're not being overstretched, you get rid of that deep achiness. So how can you reduce your neck pain? Well, the bottom line is you can reduce your neck pain by optimizing your posture. This can be done best by exercise and intermittently using an orthotic, a neck brace. So next we're gonna talk about different types of exercises, but realistically, you really need to see a physical therapist to give you an individualized approach. For example, just in this picture alone, laying with a towel roll may be too strenuous for some individuals. Uh, they may need a pillow under their head. The idea of having the towel roll behind the neck is to help preserve the natural cervical lordosis that I talked about earlier. So here's a few examples of range of motion exercises. So the first one with looking up is an important part of flexibility that we need in order to hold our head up and look straight ahead. Here's a few examples of isometric exercises. And the first one's a video. Another exercise to strengthen the back of those muscles that have become very weak 
is doing an isometric. And what you can do is push the back of your head against this towel here and then hold it for five to 10 seconds. Another exercise is putting your fingers on the side of your temple there, pushing against your head, but not letting your head move. And what that does is it helps strengthen the muscles on the side of your neck. Doing exercises in a lying down position can be helpful, especially for those people who have some dystonia, because a lying down position seems to minimize that. Earlier, we discussed how the deep muscles in your neck become weak and it's because of a focal myopathy. A small area that gets affected for various reasons, it doesn't spread to anywhere in the body, but it just hits that one area in the deep muscles in your neck. The good news is there's a superficial muscle that helps straighten your neck out, and that's the upper trapezius. That's why it's nice to work on these extensor exercises for your neck because we can capitalize on that one superficial muscle and try and really strengthen that to help straighten your neck out. That muscle does not work in terms of tilting your head back so you can see straight on, but it does help with lifting your neck in a little bit better position. There's also a tendency for your shoulder muscles to become deconditioned because you're not reaching up like you used to. So if you don't use it, you lose it kind of a thing. So here's an example of a couple of shoulder strengthening exercises. Performing exercises lying down with the TheraBand does two things. It allows you to exercise in a good posture, which is very important. It allows you to work your back muscles, which you normally wouldn't be able to do if you had free weights. You can also progress the resistance with the TheraBand by using different colors. So your therapist can then progress you to your capabilities. So there's a lot of benefits of doing these particular exercises. And next we have cervical orthotics for drop head syndrome. The first two you can get over the counter or online and they come in different sizes so you need to measure yourself. And then the third one is typically purchased through an orthotist who can customize the brace for you. I just thought I'd do a little show and tell here. Uh, here I have the rolling collar and the nice thing with this is you can velcro each piece of it to wash it uh, and then the back strap can come off. Then the way you put it on is you put it close up into your neck, you loop the big strap around and then you Velcro it shut. Now the nice thing with the Rollian and the Headmaster, it's not hot. It gives you enough support so that you can rest your head on it. You could also, while you're wearing it, try and lift your head, reduce the pressure on there as a little bit of an exercise and activate those uh, extensor muscles in the back. Um, so if you need to turn your head, you can turn your head. And then you just wear it, like if you need to, to wear it for doing things on the computer that's handy, uh, watching TV, and then to take it off, you just Velcro it and take it off like that. So that's the roll-in. And then there's the Headmaster collar. This collar has quite a beading. I use this for many years in physical therapy. And same thing, you just loop it around your neck. And just like the roll-in. And then you Velcro it shut. It goes down a little bit further. And I, I looked at it, it's about the same width as the other, as the roll-in. Um, and this has worked for quite a few of my patients. There's a subset that it doesn't work for, uh, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Now with the Headmaster collar, uh, there's nothing that comes off to wash it, except for the, the chin pad. You can take that off, 
So this is the subset of individuals that I could not fit the headmaster collar to. And the reason being is because of their posture. They were so kyphotic in their spine, meaning that it was bent forward like that. And then their head was so far forward that the headmaster collar just could not be adjusted to this posture for those individuals. So both the Rollian and the headmaster, they come in different sizes, but you measure for them differently. With the Rollian, you measure around your neck, and then for the headmaster, you measure from the center of your chin to the corner of your mandible, so right by your jawbone, so that distance there. And that's how you measure for them. So here's somebody's practical perspective of using the Oxford collar, but you could say that could apply to the other two collars, the headmaster and the Rollian. Without this brace, my head would probably be sitting on my chest, which makes it very difficult to do daily things like driving. I, before I got this brace, which is called an Oxford collar, by the way, I was sitting on a pillow and doing my best to keep my head up. I wore glasses for driving, which makes a further issue of this because I wasn't looking out of the proper part of the glass because I couldn't get my head up high enough. So I wasn't seeing very well either, and I was very uncomfortable driving. And this seems to help that. There's no way I can put my head down. I don't need a pillow anymore because I can definitely see up over the, the steering wheel to the out the windshield. I also wear it for movies because if you sit in a movie and have to look up at the screen, you can only I can only do that for so long before it gets really tired and then my head flops down and I can't see anything. I went through all of Italy looking at cobblestones and cigarette butts until my husband would say to me, oh, look at that. And then I would struggle to lift my head and see what he was referring to. Um, this is much better than that. I um, could wear it more often but it doesn't, it isn't doing anything therapeutic for me. It does not help you to strengthen that muscle or do anything like that. So there really isn't any point in wearing it for any longer than you need it. I could um, try to do my artwork with it, but I think I would be fighting it constantly because my head is necessarily down and when I do that, I'm putting pressure on my jaw to keep it down. So I might as well do the work without it and try to keep my head up, which is the goal. Just one more thing I want to add is generally speaking, most of my patients who do wear these collars, they take them off for when they eat because they pretty uniformly feel that it's interfering with their chewing. So just one extra tip. So I'm going to talk about two more collars. The first one is the Aspen collar. The Aspen collar is an overkill for what you need for your drop head. It's very restrictive. Uh, there's no motion at all, and it's really intended for individuals who have uh, cervical injuries, and it needs to be protected like almost like in a splint kind of a thing. So uh, I would advise against this kind of collar, as well as when you use it a lot, your muscles are not being used at all and they become weaker and weaker. Now I had one patient with that had uh, the Aspen collar and he came in and he had a drop head. He's the only individual I had who had to hold his head getting in and out of bed because all the muscles around his neck were weak. So we were able to strengthen, you know, most of the muscles in his neck and he did do better, but that's just one example of really how detrimental it is to use the right kind of orthotic for your needs. So this is the last collar we're gonna talk about. It's your standard soft cervical collar. 
that most people are familiar with. The thing with this type of collar, it tends to be softer. You tend to collapse it in the front as your chin rests on it, or you hook over it and you go past the collar and your head is still tipping down. For some individuals, they feel it's sufficient. But for, I think, most individuals, I think the other two collars would be more advantageous. Also with this collar, it tends to be hotter. Everybody complains how hot it is. Whereas the other collars, the, the Rollian and the Headmaster, they're open and they don't get hot. So this is to give you an idea of what to expect. We don't know how much your ability to lift your head will improve. But we do know you can control your neck pain with better posture, even if it's wearing a neck brace as needed. You need to maintain the flexibility in your neck so that you can lift your head into a position regardless if it's actively or passively. You also want to maintain your neck flexibility for sleeping positions for comfort. Working diligently on your strengthening exercises for your neck extensors with the initial guidance of a physical therapist will help you on the path to maximize your potential and that way you'll know how far you can get. If you want to see more videos like this one, go to YouTube and enter Mia Bolin or go to my website, parkinsonspt.com. Thank you.